I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. I'm about to tell you how to soup up your brushless micro if you want to go 4, even maybe 5S with this new flight controller from HGLRC. They have made the XJB F440. And what is the F440? Well, it's a 40 amp 4-in-1 ESC right here. So, kind of crazy. We're approaching 40 amp on a 20 millimeter mounting stack. This is pretty amazing. So I have my BL Heli, this is 32 bit ESCs right here and the F4 flight controller. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit closer and show you guys. If you haven't seen this one before, um, this is gonna be a treat for you. Now also for this review, I also have, I'm just gonna show you a small example of one of my favorite boards from HGLRC. And I use the Zeus on my run cam split micro back there uh, to make that a shorter stack and this is great because it's an all-in-one ESC stack with a flight controller pretty cool but what we're looking at here today is the XJB F440 and uh, let me go ahead and put the camera up on the stand and get it a little higher and zoom in on this little flight controller first and then we'll check out the ESC layout it's pretty easy to wire all this up you don't have to power any wire coming up to the flight controller and it makes it really easy just to get this one going it includes all the hardware and standoffs as well so for around $77 you can get the ESC stack and the flight controller and you can also pay a little extra money there a little another $30 for the VTX that mounts on the very top of the whole thing so this box right here came with everything I needed including the VTX in this box and it was all ready to go now if you haven't seen this flight controller before or you're new to brushless micros you're in for a treat because this is one of the largest ESC combos with an F4 flight controller that I know of. Um, I don't know of anything else out there that has more than 40 amp ESCs included on a micro brushless stack. So this is pretty revolutionary again from HGLRC. They just keep pushing the envelope higher and higher. And uh, I really wish some big company would uh, invest some money into HGLRC. I think that would be a great investment. Now this F4 flight controller is pretty basic and really easy to wire up. Now at this point in the video, go ahead and make sure it's full screen on your laptop your tablet or your TV. That way you can see these tabs I'm going to show you here. It's a very basic layout. You have your F4 chip right in the middle there. You have your USB port for hooking up to Betaflight, the directional arrow, and that's going to tell you that this is the forward direction of this. You have the boot button right here. It's a little tiny gold tab. If you press it with your fingernail, you can feel it goes up and down. You have 20 by 20 mounting holes right on each corner. And that's pretty standard on most 2 inch to 3 inch micros these days. Even starting to see some 5 inch frames with these 20 millimeter mounting points. That's pretty cool. It's going to lighten up 5 inch quads a lot. Now next up, over here on the right hand side you have your spots for your DSMX hookups. So you Spectrum guys, you can put your receiver right on these three tabs right here. The very top one's going to be your signal, and this one's going to be 3.3 volt. And I was telling someone today that Spectrum receivers run a little lower current than something like an FR Sky receiver. Your FR Sky guys are going to be down bottom here. And down here along this rail we have where the camera hooks up and the VTX. So over here you have negative, which is going to be your ground spot. You have your camera signal wire right here, and you have your 5 volt right there. Over here on the right hand side you have where your positive wire hooks up, your signal wire from your VTX, and your ground wire there. And also for you FlySky guys, if you're wondering where do I hook up my FlySky receiver, well you hook it up right where the DSMX spot is. So go ahead and put your, your iBus receiver right in this section right here on these three. Now down here along this rail on this bottom side right here you have where your LEDs hook up and your buzzer. So I'm going to start from the left over here. We have 5 volt all the way over here on this side and that's not filled in yet but I will fill that in for my buzzer and LED hookup. The next one over here is going to be where your buzzer positive wire hooks up to and that should be the next one over from this one right here. The next one over is going to be where your LED hooks up for your LED board and the next one over from that one is going to be your ground so all the way over to the right is going to be where your ground goes you see a little negative right there now if we flip this baby over we still have some more stuff on the very bottom this is where your signals come up from the ESC's right here this just plugs right in you have eight pins right here on the ESC stack that come up and meet this and power the flight controller and also tell the flight controller which motor is which and which ESC is which you also have a spot for your current sensor on here and you have an RSSI tab right here. 
And across this very bottom rail, we have some more stuff, even more stuff on here. We have TX6 all the way over here. We have RX6, TX3, BB, RX3, and 5 volt on the very far side there on the right. Now you're looking at that big monster 40 amp ESC stack right here and it's not even really stack it's just one layer part of the stack in total. Um, very very nice and they do offer this one as a replacement. I have one sitting here next to my bench and um, if you burn one out you'll have to replace all of them. That's the only downside of using 4-in-1s but we're so far along in 4-in-1 ESCs and using them now that um, it rarely happens to me. When it does it's a bummer um, but it's it's very rare that, that I blow out a 4-in-1 ESC. Now over here we have motor number one and those are those three tabs right there. Motor number two is these three tabs. These three tabs here are actually motor number four and number three here. So you have one, two, three, four as it is in beta flight. Now it doesn't matter which way you hook up these wires, you see they're color coded, but just solder these up any old which way. And if you have the wrong motor direction going, you can fix that inside BL Heli. Now the next thing you guys will notice is this huge capacitor hanging off there. They do offer an optional capacitor. They sent me this one in one box and I got a smaller one. And if you prefer the smaller one, you might be able to find this one on their site because I believe they do sell these by themselves. This is a 25 volt and this one might be a little bit larger. Let's see what this one is. This one's actually a 35 volt and this one's 1000 UF and uh, this one's called a J-Con. You might be able to look these up on eBay. They're pretty cheap. They're uh, maybe a couple dollars for about five or six of these. And what these do is just, just really clean up your video signal a lot. If you have a lot of lines or something in your video feed, go ahead and throw one of these capacitors on where your battery terminals are, positive and negative. Make sure you pay attention to that. Usually on the side of these capacitors, they'll have a little negative like this on the side of the capacitor. So you know which side is negative and which side is positive. Now some of these don't come with color coded wires like these two have. So it's kind of nice that HGLRC includes these and they're color coded for you to solder onto your VBAT terminals. And a lot of these companies really listen to us lately. They watch the videos and they they take notes on what you guys want. And what we've been wanting for at least 12 months is 200 milliwatt getting away from 25 milliwatt on a brushless micro. It really makes a big difference when you fly off 100 yards and you have something like this VTX that's 200 milliwatt. So this is the TX20 version two and it's, it's running 200 milliwatt which makes me really happy. You have an LED on the top and you have this smaller connector here for your dipole. You can run, a, actually you can run a larger style antenna off this too if you get an extension with a little connector for a regular size antenna. You can also do that too, but a lot of times on micros, I use these small dipoles and I just put a zip tie and some heat shrink over top of it, kind of strengthen it up on the top of the frame. And I believe this one is switchable down to 25 milliwatt. If you're doing any kind of multi-GP race, you can turn it down. But what I like about these boards a lot is that HGLRC has really clean up their printing on these boards in the past year. When I first used to get these prototypes from them, maybe a year ago or more, sometimes they were printed really muddy and it was hard to decipher what some of this stuff says, but I can clearly see how things are marked on here. So I have a video right here, and then we have ground, we have five volt, we have OSD, ground, and seven to 26 volt right there for the input on this board. So pretty nice large voltage range on this VTX. Uh, you're not really going to fry this one. You can almost put this one anywhere on the board. Um, if you do decide to power it straight off of your battery terminals, you're going to want to have some kind of a, a little bit of an LC filter in between your power, your main power source and this. So um, you could run this board all the way up to 4S. Pretty amazing. So in my opinion, guys, I think this is going to be one of the most sought after boards this year, uh, especially for the first quarter of 2018. Um, this is going to set a new standard on brushless micros and would be something that you could add on a five inch racer. So I'm going to experiment with more of those. I'm going to get more of those frames in with those 20 millimeter optional mounting holes on there uh, on my five inch quads. I'm looking forward to that. So a lot of those companies should pay attention to that, that a lot of us want that. But I think for the money for around $80 for these two pieces right here, the ESC four in one combo and the flight controller, that's a pretty decent price for what you get. And then throw in another $30 for that awesome two milliwatt transmitter and I think you'd have a great combination on any two to three inch Brussels micro and what's also cool about it is you do get that capacitor and they throw in all the hardware that you need they include these long standoffs these go all the way through 
and these are not plastic these are actually metal posts that go all the way up through there so that's nice this is not going to break in half when you have a crash i've had restless micros in the past 12 months kind of have break these smaller pieces so um, these smaller standoffs can break quite easily so that's the f440 guys hope you like checking that out and uh, just give you a, another look at this hglrc f4 zeus because this thing is one of my favorites now i showed you all those different stacks in the f440 but check this out this is pretty cool right here. This is everything. This is the flight controller and ESCs all in one and has 20 by 20 mounting points on it. You've got all your tabs along here. You have your motor numbers easily seen here. Number one, two, three, and four motors, just like it is in beta flight. You've got your spot for your camera up front. You have your VTX in the back next to your battery terminals. You've got your boot button, your USB port. You've got support for DSMX and SBUS receivers on this one. And you have an optional harness on the bottom of this one for your buzzer and LED. So they couldn't add all the tabs on here for you guys. So what they did was they made a harness with some wires coming off of it. And they include that in this kit, which is pretty nice. So this is another strong competitor this year if you want to make something shorter because look at that. That's just awesome. And the height on this is going to be right around six millimeters and you have 20 by 20 mounting posts right here and from front to back we have 36.5 millimeters there and from side to side let's see what we have esc terminal to esc terminal we have 32 millimeters there not too bad and like i was saying before i used the zeus on this build right here for my three inch and my split micro i was super excited when this came in and this zeus let me actually pull this off and this is what i would recommend for you guys if you decide to get the run cam split micro this is going to make everything a lot shorter so that's all the latest and greatest from HGLRC. I really like this company. I think they're really up and coming. Like I said before, I think we need to find a big company to invest some money into HGLRC because they've really, I've seen their process and I've seen how hard these guys are working to make cool stuff for you guys. Um, even on this micro level, this is just a whole nother level of engineering. And they also changed up their logo. If you check out their website, it's hglrc.com. They also changed that to make it a little easier to find. I kind of like this new logo. It simplifies it a lot, but uh, some people People say they might be missing the dinosaur if the dinosaur goes away. I kind of like the T-Rex on there as well. But most of all, what I like is the performance that I get out of these products and uh, I can stand behind these for sure. So I'll put some links below. You guys can check them out. I might get a little bit of commission from some of the ones down there or I might not. But either way, you know about what's new from HGLRC and I appreciate you guys watching the channel and hanging out with me and flying. So uh, it really means a lot to me and um, I like seeing your comments and I like interacting with you guys down there. There. so please do post a comment if you like the video if not uh, dislike it you're, it's up to you you're on YouTube thanks again for watching you guys I'm Justin Davis I'll see you on the next one